Hi everyone, here's a very quick five minute video on producing triptychs for camera clubs. It's fully automated and just go through this video to explain how to work with it. But down in the description below, there is a link and that will take you to the action. Download it, load it into Photoshop as I've shown in this video here. In future, all triptychs can be fully automated, but you can still edit them. To load my actions, make sure the actions palette is open. If it's not, pop over to window in the menu and then scroll down to actions and make sure that's ticked. Once it's ticked, then the actions palette will show up. On the actions palette, come over to the little menu here, click on that and then go down to load actions. This will open up where you saved it from, so mine's in downloads here. Click on the action and then come down and open. That will load it into the actions palette usually at the bottom it may be closed as a folder or it may be open like this there are a few of my other actions here so if you want to look those up on my downloads page there are associated videos with some of these some are pretty simple and self-explanatory like flatten and flatten srgb if you want to play with those do so you can also collapse this and if you want to move that around just click and drag it up and down where you want it to go I'm going to delete this because I've got mine already up on the top here. So that goes to the bin and let's open up the folder here. Down here is the trip tick. Make sure that's highlighted. Now what's important is that you open three files and these three files must be renamed as T1, T2 and T3. If you don't do this, the action's not going to work. They can be different size files, but make sure they are full resolution files. Don't bring in small PDIs that need to be resized back up. Your images will come in as smart objects, so you'll be able to resize them as you want in the final image. You can see these are all square, but they are slightly different sizes, so you can bring in whatever size you like, and then once in, you can start adjusting the sizes if you need to. But if you want, you can resize them to what you need and then let the action bring it in and you won't have to do anything else. So just click once on Triptych and come down and click on play and then let Photoshop just do its thing. That may take quicker or longer depending on the speed of your own machine. So let's just zoom in here for you. Move those actions out the way. This is how the files come in in separate layers here and they're all lined up ready to go. It has a black background to start with, but you can turn that off if you want the white background underneath. Each of the layers have strokes onto them, so you can turn those off and on if you wish, like this. And if you want to change them, you can double click on stroke and you can change the color there. If you have a white background, you may want to change that to black or maybe a shade of gray, or even a colored one if you want a colored stroke. So we'll cancel that. Up at the top here, there's a text layer which you can delete at the end and you can see I've just put some information there for you. So you use the move tool, V on the keyboard, and you can move the images around. So just click and drag those if you need to do that and realign. Also, you can use command or control T. So command on the Mac, control on Windows. That brings up the transform tool and you can pull that out and just resize if you need to. That's really useful if you've got different size images and they won't work as a line. So you can actually rearrange things, then just put those where you need them. Don't forget to center them up by selecting them all and working within the center. You can put a grid on and that's command or control and the speech marks. So let's just undo all of that with command Z and we get back to where we started. When you're finished, you can delete that text layer, so either drag it down to the bin, or if I undo that, you can click on it and just press backspace. So that's it, you can either leave it as it is as it comes in, or do some rearranging and resizing, but that's ready now to flatten and save as you normally would with a title and author. It's already at 1600 by 1200, but if you want, you can crop this down further. So we'll just show you that with C on the keyboard for the crop tool. And then we can just drag and resize the crop if you want to lose the top and the bottom there. But just center that up a little bit, double click and there's the crop. 
I hope you find that useful and if your club does different sizes than 1600 by 1200 it is fully editable so once you get to the finish here you can just go back to image size and resize that to the dimensions that your club needs for projection.